I think we have enough people, right? We can start. I said I should wait. I was I was ordered to wait, so. I know. I'm catching up on my Slack. Like, just hold off. I'll wait. Wait. It's hard to do a presentation when you're in your Slack. Is everybody here on uh, Drupal Slack, by the way? Does everybody here not know what Slack is? Maybe I should start with that. It's okay if you don't. Slack. There is a Drupal Slack. If you're not on it, I uh, recommend you get on it. So you can find out what's going on in your particular neck of the woods or your line of interest. There's channels for project managers, just like there is channels for developers. Highly, highly recommend it. I think we're up to uh, 5,000, 4,500 or 5,000 users. So it's really handy when you're stuck at the middle of the night. It's 2 a.m. and your client is expecting something at 9. All right, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, I apologize for the delay for those that just walked in. Um, I was asked to hold off starting for a few more minutes. There was a coffee break running a little long. Um, let me uh, get started. You're in uh, the Agile Sprint Tools rundown, uh, how, when to use a mallet when you really need a Mjolnir. Everybody knows what a Mjolnir is, right? Of course. So Thor's hammer is called a Mjolnir. Um, I don't have a picture of it, but it's pretty impressive. If you ever watched any of the uh, Marvel um, movies, um, it's he can only is the only one who can pick it up, um, and it's a it's an appropriate title. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about myself and what we're going to do here. This is a quick session. Um, it's hopefully going to be 20 minutes, so we have enough time to do some talking and questions. Um, my name is Chris Urban. I'm a manager in professional services in Acquia. I'm from Philadelphia in the United States. It's my first DrupalCon and probably last in Europe. Um, I've been playing with Drupal since 2008. Um, was anybody at the pre-note this morning? Okay, so you know a little backstory there. Um, oh yes, I was wondering who that belonged to. Um, I'm a certified scrum master, I'm a site builder, I'm actually, shh, don't tell anybody, I used to actually do some development a long time ago, 
um, which is how I got started. Uh, like everybody else, you were looking for the perfect solution, tried building one yourself, played with Joomla, WordPress, um, Moodle, PHP, Nuke, NetNuke, whatever else was out there, and settled on Drupal, and I've just stuck with it ever since. It's my, by far my favorite. Um, I actually come from a marketing agency background, publishing, newspaper business, so all those frustrations with working with designers that are still locked in the world of print, I've heard it all. Um, and this session is really to talk about um, some alternative tools to JIRA, which is like the big elephant in the room that everybody either wants to use, um, is lucky to use, or you can't afford to use. And if you're like a medium to small agency and you don't have the budget for it, there's plenty of other tools that are worth trying. So this session hopes to kind of go through a lot of these and maybe this will spawn interest. You might want to go and play with these more. But nobody has time to sit down and install all this stuff and play with it. So that was the goal here, to kind of go through them all in quick succession, give you the highlights, the lowlights, what sucks, what doesn't, and hopefully one of these might um, deserve some attention from you and your project. Uh, so any questions before I begin? Okay, so uh, we talked about it. What is there that we can use in place of JIRA? Now, I'm a JIRA nerd, first and foremost, so I have a very heavy bias for JIRA. I respect the power, and it comes right great responsibility. Um, so I wanted to keep in mind um, there is a list of assumptions and desired features, and I still haven't found what I'm looking for, but there is a lot that's out there that shows a lot of promise. So a couple a couple uh, key things to keep in mind. I'm trying to rank what I've gone through with an eye towards, um, you know, you're, you've been using Google Sheets or Excel. It's not enough. You don't want to go all the way into Jira. You're already familiar with Agile, maybe Scrum or Kanban or both. Um, and I'm giving a preference to stuff that's off the shelf, easily installable, something I can host myself maybe, and most importantly, it's cheap. So it's free, right? Or it's a perpetual license, or let's say the least preference uh, per seat license. And that is actually the model we'll see a lot of. The X dollars or euros per month for 10 users, that sort of thing. In terms of a wish list, the things I was looking for, I want something that'll help me with project planning and ideally keeping track of the resources that are on the project. This is a high um, goal, it's a hard, bill to fit. Um, I'd like to have something that allows me to manage a backlog. So I have a lot of requests from my product owners. They wanted to get it into the upcoming sprint or planned into your Kanban development. How do you keep track of that? Um, and if you are running a Scrum sprint cycle, an iterative development cycle, something that will allow you to keep track of the work in progress, um, any sort of tracking of effort, if it's hours or points, just so that you have some feedback mechanism for your estimation process. Ideally, if there's any way to do reporting, so I can see who did what for how long, when, or where there were problems in the last sprint to raise these in your retrospective. So now that I've given you my wish list, I'm gonna tell you off the bat, I have yet to find one that fits all of them. So don't be disappointed. And this is part of the, part of the process. There are a lot of good candidates, um, I will say that, um, but Nothing, there's still nothing that fits everything yet. All right, now this is gonna be fun. This is the first time I'm doing this in this kind of format. So if this is really cheesy, just bear with me, it's only 20 minutes. We're gonna do this like a radio station top 10 list, all right? So number 10, coming in this week in the Agile Sprint Tools countdown, number 10 is MyCollab. MyCollab is a Trello-like tool. If ever, is everyone here familiar with Trello? Okay, awesome, so this is a good baseline. Um, it includes a Gantt chart, milestones, and time tracking, which is not in Trello, unless not out of the box. It lets you do some issue management. You can install a community version, this is the key word to look for here, um, on Linux or Windows, but like Jira, it needs Java to run. So don't consider this necessarily easy to install. So to understand like level of complexity, I have Jira running on this laptop because that's the kind of nerd I am, but I don't tr encourage you to do it at home. Um, they have, to give you a sense of the cost, $19 a month for 10 users, $100 a month for 60 users. 
So this is kind of in the size, I'm thinking, a typical medium, small to medium shop. You've got a couple of projects going on. This is probably in your size range. But this is number 10 in the list. So um, it looks kind of familiar, right? You've got your dashboard on the left. You've got this kind of uh, messages pseudo Slack sort of tool in there. Um, they separate bugs from tasks. Um, I just picked this one screenshot. This is not a, a good representative uh, example, but it has, uh, it's, it's okay, it's great. Now, this is really stupid, but for me, one reason why this is at number 10, if you go to the home page, there's still lorem ipsum down at the bottom. So that to me is not a good sign. I'm just, you know, if this were me, I'd be like, okay, somebody's gotta get on the stick. So one reason, this is at the bottom of my list. All right, number nine this week, with this con, Assembla. Uh, anyone here use Assembla? If, I mean, actually, I should do this for each one. Has anyone here used or are familiar with MyCollab? Awesome, see, so now two tools you've never heard of, you don't need to go play with. Assembla um, has a really, one thing I like from the developer perspective, um, it has an interface, it has an integration with GitHub. Um, it's slick looking, it looks nice, but it's expensive. Um, so comparatively for the number of users, it's a little more pricey. Um, this does have, hopefully this is the animation, um, this does have um, some of the basic items here, so I've kind of put in the key typical tasks for a dummy project. You can see this Trello-like board, right? So to do, doing, done. You can here, instead of dragging the rank, you have to use this up, down, priority button, but pulling them into the, quote, sprint is pretty straightforward. But overall, it's okay. It still doesn't have a lot of the features or things that I want from, let's say, a Jira. And again, I hate to say it like that, but um, little errors like that still pop up. Um, but you have a pretty straightforward sprint board, and I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. It includes uh, these other bug fixes categories, so it's really more oriented as like a support help desk kind of tool rather than a sprint tool. Um, it does have this like overall reporting, so if you have, let's say, your entire backlog, the equivalent in Jira would be like a version reporting, and this calendar feature, which is pretty nice. That's another thing that is not in Jira. Um, and some of the reporting that, if you're familiar with Jira, straight, you know, typical scrum level reporting. So reporting is good, the UI is okay, kind of expensive. All right, let's keep going. Um, one more thing, oh, integrations. There's a lot of things that this connects with um, and it comes with. So there's like a wiki, uh, you have a stand-up tool, which is kind of nice, so if you wanna to talk to me about that and Slack later, I can tell you some other tricks. Twitter, I don't know why you want to connect Twitter to your sprint board, like, oh my God, we completed a ticket. <laughs> Whatever. Um, uh, but the development integration, the Git and SVN hooks are pretty nice. All right, number eight, rest your board. Um, so quick little background, I did this session, an earlier version of this at DrupalCon New Orleans, so a year and a half ago, and I talked about this project then, and it's still worth being in the countdown. For a Trello alternative, this is a good one because you can self-host this on your own instance and there's no restrictions. So it really is a more open source model than what Trello is. And this is even more timely because Trello has been acquired by Atlassian, as you probably know. Um, the only problem, and I don't know that they've still fixed this, is that there are some issues with performance in Internet Explorer, but if you're an Internet Explorer, you have bigger problems. So <laughs> let's do a quick demo here. Um, again, the way this thing loads, um, it's very, very Trello-like, and in fact, what I do here is I load a JSON export from a Trello board, so I have the same list of tickets, and you can see you know, your members of your team, what they've been assigned to, you drag them across the columns, you can add details, you can upvote, which is kind of nice. Um, it's, you know, it gets the job done, it's good. Um, one other nice thing, if I scroll back up, I hope I remember this, you can do um, maybe not. You can do multiple selection of cards, which if you're in Trello, you know it's a pain in the ass. You have to go to each single one to, to assign them. Um, keep going, keep going. 
And um, the other nice piece that this does have that Trello doesn't have is it gives you a list view and a calendar view also. So again, those two extra, so this is your, let's trace traceability, your activity log. You have this kind of basic reporting, the list of tasks or permissions. You can have email notifications, so it becomes very uh, Trello-like. Right, okay, there we go. And multi-select, so that's the task list, so I can do this as a bulk list and then the calendar, so you can see when their due dates are scheduled. So you can publish this kind of information. Those are nice features, and a Gantt chart. So that's why this is number eight in my list. All right, keep going. Number seven. I have to sound like a DJ. Orange Scrum, this is a new one. Um, this is tricky to install. Um, there's a free version that's uh, the community version. It's, it, I have still yet to get it installed on my laptop. It's, um, it's tricky. There is a demo online that you can play with, so the screenshots I'll show you are from that. Um, and it's a little bit different revenue model uh, or cost model where they give you the basic set of tools and they charge you for the add-ons. So in that method, they can do like um, defect tracking or a Gantt chart or the ability to do resource allocations. You have to pay per module. And they're not cheap. They're you know, anywhere from, I think, 50 to $100 or euros, whatever it is, um, per element. So it can get expensive pretty quickly. Uh, what is nice is that it has a template. So you can say a design ticket versus a backlog ticket and structure the way people are entering in their stories differently which is interesting. Um, they give you the task list as well as a Kanban board, and it comes with apps to integrate with Slack and um, iOS and Android, which is kind of nice. Um, again, it's open source, so you could literally host it anywhere you want for free. You can do their hosting for not too bad. You pay a one-time perpetual license for 10 users, or let's say $1,000 for 50 users, and it gives you a year of maintenance and support. So if you need any help getting set up, it's included. So again, 12 months, that's $10, $20 for 10 users. It's in the same ballpark, what I would expect. All right, so a quick walk through what this thing looks like. Again, dashboard, you're seeing how these things look familiar. They kind of organize everything and give you this summary reporting, which is kind of slick. Um, you can keep track of all the milestones in your project by list, and then if you go up to the top, you'll see you can jump over to basically the Kanban view. So this is the Trello task board view that everybody's familiar with. And the same things work. It keeps you reporting. You can set up email, the whole nine yards. Again, you get it as a nice, convenient task list. And that's it. So that's that one. And then the next slide, I should show uh, creating a new ticket. I think that's what I did here. i got to remember what I put in here. Oh, this is the, actually, I don't want that, that one. There we go. Uh, there's a place for files. The add-ons, this is what's really cool. These are all the extra pieces that I was talking about, but you have to pay for this stuff. So in this demo, they give you a taste of it, essentially, but the Gantt chart is not included. You have to pay for that, but handy. All right, so that's that one. All right, let's take a break from the countdown and talk about some stuff that didn't make the cut, because I tried to limit it to 10, which is really hard if you think about it. Uh, one of the projects I talked about last time, I still think it's interesting, especially you have a very uh, developer-centric organization. This is like about as simple of a project management tool as you can get, which is basically marked up text. And I took the slide out that shows it, but it's literally text using hashtags, at symbols, percent symbols to track and tag the different lines of work. And you would basically, I guess, commit the file to your repo, and which is kind of meta. Um, but you have everything tracked in one text board, and it has a front-end renderer that turns it into something that's pretty nice. I don't think this is for your average team, but that's why it's kind of worth mentioning. Three more, and I just didn't get a chance to play with these enough. Um, or the when I time I had, it wasn't as interesting or appealing to me. Pivotal Tracker is one that I've seen used a lot, but this is like for really, really small teams. Um, the costs for that go up pretty substantially. Mingle is worth interesting. That has a pretty slick UI too. And version one, I just haven't had a chance to play with as much. 
So again, next time I do this talk, I'll try to cover those. I'll, uh, this PDF will be added to the deck, so don't worry about scrambling it. Uh, write all these things down. And I'll give you the list at the end, too. All right, number six on the countdown, uh, LibreBoard, or WeCan. So it used to be called LibreBoard before, and it's another Restia board. You see where this is going? Um, it is to Trello, so they became WeCan, and it is pretty slick. It runs on Meteor and Sandstorm, which means, again, installation is a little tricky if you want to do this yourself, and I wouldn't attempt it. Um, what is interesting is that the way they build this, it's kind of like um, Steam. So instead of Steam for games, it's their, uh, the Meteor Sandstorm platform for project management apps, which is kind of weird. Um, it's not, I mean, it makes sense, but it's not what we're accustomed to. So if you go up to the apps up at the top left, you'll get this list of other things that you can install, download, and add on. Um, one thing here I want to note again is multi-selection. Like, why is this not in Trello? I, it's beyond me. You need a Chrome plugin to do it. Um, everybody else has it. But it's Trello, pretty much. All right, next up, number five. I really love Aganti, and I'm really glad, A, I'm here in Europe, because these guys are in Germany, and they have put a lot of effort into this tool. They're kind of like the dark horse in the background, building this really, really simple tool. It's a Gantt chart, so it's the most basic project management tool. They have done a lot of improvement over the last year and a half. I've been keeping an eye on these guys, and it's really worth looking into. It's free. They have added uh, synchronizing to a Google Calendar. They give you unlimited projects and teams. There's a full traceability audit for every change that's been done. You can draw your tasks now, which Again, sounds really mundane and basic. It didn't have it originally, and it was lower on my list because of stupid things like this. They've just added this maybe in the last three months. You can draw your task, and you can do the dependency uh, chart. So X task is dependent on this one. And if you're planning out your project, that is really, really important. It includes a Chrome app, so you don't have to go to the, you don't have to go to the site. Um, and they support exports, which are really nice. They give you a lot of nice basic reporting. So for a small team, I would, I would definitely look at this. This is really cool. Uh, this is one of their, this is the reports, doesn't really show you anything. Um, this is a little bit better, so this is kind of how this thing looks. So what I'm trying to show is drawing an additional task, and you fill in the, fill in the blanks as to what it is, and you can assign it, give it a due do, a do, a deadline, add some other notes, if you drag it to make a dependency, it'll show up in the dependencies. Um, it's got a nice UI, right? So adding a dependency is that easy. This was not possible three months ago. They are making a lot of progress. So if anything else, keep an eye on them and come back and visit them in another couple months. But multiple teams, multiple projects, it's, it's slick. All right, that's why we're in the top five now. Number four. This is another one of my favorites, uh, taiga.io. This one is about as close as I can get to a true Jira replacement for a smaller team. It's uh, Python-based. If you know Jira, you know how to use this. Um, and again, one other, like from the developer perspective, having that integration with GitHub or any other, like Bitbucket, any other uh, repository is, is mandatory um, so that you know what's going on. You can do this uh, hosted for free, so you can try it out, basically. Uh, and then if you really want to use it, you pay a subscription fee. Again, the same kind of per month model. Um, if you want to shell out 10,000 to support the development, you, you, know, you can get everything for, for 10K forever. Um, they um, allow you to set this up on your own server, and they give you unlimited users and unlimited, unlimited projects. So again, worth playing with. Setting up is tricky, is hard, because it's Python. It's not what you expect. Um, but this is kind of uh, a mix between Asana and Jira. So again, the list of um, activities. I go to my backlog view. I get the reporting to see what my burn down is like. Adding a story is real easy, right? And if I want to do multiple tickets, I just do one line per thing, and it'll automatically add them in. And now there's my stories, right? 
You can tag them and categorize them. Um, you can customize the estimation. You can customize the workflow states. And it's got a pretty slick UI. Right, so now I'm gonna add it to my sprint, and so on. And now if I go to the task board for the sprints, similar cat typical board setup, you can customize these however you want. It's, it's not bad, it really isn't. And you get the nice reporting up at the top, which is like, how far are we, you know, how many points burned down, and so on and so on. So uh, definitely, worth, um, definitely worth looking at. Oh, uh, block tickets, right, I forgot about this. So this is actually nice, and you can relate the tasks to each other, which is quicker by the search, which, you know, if you know Jira, everything is written the same way. You really can't do that. Um, it's meant to be less ticket number versus the actual summary of the ticket, which is good because it kind of reinforces the need to make the summary in English, not, you know, ABC-245. Nobody knows what that is. Uh, and this is a, well, because I haven't burned anything down yet, but the reporting is actually pretty nice too. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I know there was one other thing I want to make sure I put in here. Um, oh, and the team settings is really cool. Um, it, it does it slightly differently. Uh, it's much more human organized and the filtering is nice. We like, I think I showed before, searching by um, user and you can filter automatically what the tickets are rather than having to go into JIRA and create a, create a quick filter. You can just do it like on the fly. This also has plugins for HipChat and Slack. And again, I think I've mentioned it has all the connections for webhooks, GitHub, Bitbucket, and so on. All right, number three. Crocodile, Crocodile, Crocodile. Anyone here heard of this one? All right, so look at all the fun stuff you're learning. So this is yet another, after 10 of these, you're like, okay, stop, please. Another Kanban card system, but this, if the ones I showed you had a neat UI, this one is slick. What is really cool, when you join the project, they force, well, they don't force you, but they strongly recommend that you do a little onboarding game. So everybody knows what a ticket is, what's the point of a user story, where to put it, it goes in the backlog, you prioritize it, you plan out a sprint. Like all the basic concepts covered in the first 10 minutes. So this way your users are like, there's no excuse to not have them do their tickets right. I know it's, it's never enough, but the fact that they made an attempt to make it a game, they actually give users points during the course of your onboarding. So you can make this a little competition, like who has the best score after the first week. I have not seen anybody else do this. this for that alone, that's what gets us up into the number three spot. Um, another nice thing is that the triggers that they give you between workflow states, which I haven't seen. So if X kind of ticket goes between state A to state B, you can have it trigger an action. Send an email, give it a flag, ping Slack. That's kind of nice. So, you know, all tickets going into QA could show up in your Slack channel. It's not cheap, but it's, it's definitely worth investigating and it has a free trial. So it's worth playing with. So this is like a quick view inside of one of the backlog planning. Again, very simple. I, forgive me for this epic. I was just trying to fill something in. But very easy to start stubbing out a backlog, which is always to me one of the biggest challenges with a product owner base team, just put something in there. And now here you see the quick history of where it is, who it belongs to. And then I think I did some epic. Okay, so then after I have my epic, you go up to the plan and you plan your sprint. So the tickets that I've added, and you basically pull them in, and it does this little waiting crocodile thing. Now what I, while this is going, you'll notice up at the top, you see that I have 1,225 points because that was, I did most of the onboarding, so I earned all these points. And the first time you do a transition, the first time you write a story, the first time you close a ticket, you rack up all these points. So that gamif gamification element, really, really cool. All right, one more. So this is the sprint level board. Um, this is to just show you how you can organize and change this. You can customize this as you see fit. This is what comes out of the box. Um, and you can change it exactly how, however you want. All right, so that was number three. 
All right, a couple more that just missed the list. Ice Scrum. So Ice Scrum is a French outfit, and how do I make this the right way? The intentions are good, but it's still clunky. It still needs a lot of work. It's Java-based. Um, you can run it locally. Again, the install factor, really, really high complexity. Um, there is a free cloud version now, which is nice. This didn't exist a year ago. You can set up one simple public project. Um, if you want to pay for it, the pro version gives you an ice back, ice box, and road mapping feature. So the long-term planning element is included. Um, it, but it, it still needs work. So I'm going to say we'll revisit it. Another one is Gemini. This is another pretty good Jira alternative. Um, it has a very intuitive layout. Once you see it, you know where everything goes. The filtering is really nice, but, um, and it has an integrated chat, but the prices, it's kind of in the ballpark, but it's still a per user, not $10 a month for 10 users per user. This is really expensive. I think you can do better bang for the buck for this, basically. So the first one was like, it's not quite there. This one, it's just too freaking expensive. Um, that one, the um, Gemini one looks a little bit like this, and it looks, well, I hate to put it this way, it looks like it hasn't been updated since 2003. This is like your Windows NT .NET looking tool. Blech. So that to me is like, yeah, not good enough. This is a .NET shop tool, right? This is not a Drupal tool. <laughs> All right, one I haven't played with enough, but, sh what played with enough, but shows a lot of promises, Odoo, Odoo. Odoo, will you marry me? Odoo, I don't know. Um, this is another one that has that platform mentality of buying applications for the different pieces that you need. So you can get one for setting up your own Salesforce type tool, another one for issue tracking, another one for manufacturing or inventory if you're doing point of sale. So this is a very broad platform view. I mean, and I say platform, like huge, um, enterprise, not, let's say, the small, medium-sized agency that I have in my head as a target. It includes this Trello-like tool, which is kind of nice, and it has its own Slack light, but again, okay, the fact that you have your own Slack, Slack is good enough, you can do it for free, why would you build your own tool? Um, they include the timesheets and charting, which kind of tie into the inventory, manufacturing, point-of-sale, retail store kind of perspective. I think it's more than you possibly need. So that's why I didn't put it on the list. Uh, weirdly enough, it's built in PostgreSQL and Python, which seemed kind of unusual to me, but whatever. I'm not a developer, what am I talking about? Um, all right, number two. One thing everybody overlooks all the time, and so I'm putting it here in number two to reinforce it, is pointing tickets. If you are still doing like the fist in Skype or your way everybody puts their hand up or everybody just types it into chat, you're not doing it right. It should be completely blind. Everybody votes and nobody can see what anybody else is doing. So I like pointing poker. There's a couple of these out there. If you haven't used it, try this one, um, and I'll show you how it looks like really quickly. Um, you can figure out however you want to do your sizing. If you want to do SML, XL for t-shirt sizing, or you want to use Fibonacci, or I don't know, letters, you know, whatever you want, you can do it. Um, it's very, very basic. You can go in and essentially start up a new session, and you type in your name. You can join as an observer, which is basically the product owner not voting. And you can customize what your, uh, the methodology you're using. So in this case, I'm doing a Fibonacci sequence. If you're the first one there, you'll get an ID, and that's what you share with everybody. So I'm in pointing poker slash one, two, three, four, five. Everybody logs in during grooming, and you'll see everybody show up. Um, and so what I would do is, and let me go to the next slide. So now I type in my ticket. I've got three people in here that have voted. I go in and vote, and you see that we're not in consensus. I voted 13, the other two guys voted eight. So right away, you know where the difference is, and you can call out that person in grooming and say, hey, why did you vote so big? Why did you vote so small? What are we not missing? If everybody is in the consensus, uh, then it just says consensus, and you move on. So you keep it very, very streamlined. And there's a shot clock at the top, the time, how long it took to vote. So if you keep every ticket at no more than five minutes, you can blow through tickets in your grooming. And that's how grooming should work. So that's why this is number two on my list, because 
If you have a tool in your uh, toolbox, this should be one of them. All right, number one. Take a guess what my number one is. I mean, come on. Don't say Jira. Trello, yes. Yeah, it's my number, it still is not my number one. I, it, you know why? It's easy, it's intuitive, it's cheap. It gets most of the job done. It's got integrations with all the other stuff. If you want to go gold, it's still, it's not, and I have to double check that it's still $8 a month because I think it went up. But for the free one, it gives you all the important stuff that you need in one place. Everybody can look at it, right? So I'm willing to sacrifice email notifications for having everything in one board that everybody knows what to do. The problem is it's missing traceability. It's not perfect. It's just number one on my list but it doesn't have traceability. It doesn't have all that other stuff that is in the beginning of my, at the beginning of my presentation, but it, it, it does it, it does everything right. Everybody knows how to use it. So I'm glad you, it, who's upset with me for making this number one? Okay, good. I want to, inst this is exactly what I wanted. I want to instigate. So tell me why you, why you don't think it should be number one. What do you hate about it? I know, see, that's the hook. There you go. I had you. I, I, so the whole, the whole idea was that, yes, my number zero is Jira. Maybe I should say it that way. Everything, the whole point of this was to be, yes, my Mjolnir. Jira is my Mjolnir. That's exactly it. But I was trying to find, is there anything that comes close to it? This is probably the easiest one that will get me there. All the other ones have a lot of the pieces that go with it, but that's exactly, that's exactly the point of this. Now you see why this is such a hard deck to put together. Um, so I already, I talked about Jira, uh, I talked about Trello, I'm not gonna show you this, everybody knows this. Uh, you have encryption and um, uh, the extra security that it now includes. You know what this board looks like, I don't need to, everybody knows what this looks like, I'm not gonna have to go through this. Um, but what's more important, um, this is the thing you should know if you don't know these already. If you know Jira key shortcuts, you should know these in Trello. Um, how to quickly do stuff so you don't have to click on it. Hopefully everybody knows this stuff. Who here knows this already? Okay, good. So some of you, this will be good. Take this back and if you hover over a card and just uh, hit space, uh, it assigns it to yourself. That's like the easiest one. Um, label L. B to switch between the boards, so you can do everything quickly with a keyboard, and then escape to get out of it. That's the one that I don't have in there. And the nice trick is copying and pasting from Excel. If you have a row-based list of tasks, copy it, and it'll create all the tickets for you. Slurp it right in. Power user trick. So here's the list all over again in backwards order. Um, again, this is just my take, my attempt at this. I, there's probably other ones that are worth investigating, but for the sake of time, um, this is a good place to start. So hopefully this will give you some good information um, to try and, and ask. So please, uh, let me show you this. Oh, sorry, anybody else want, I'll put the deck up. Uh, let's see if I can do this. How do I go back? That, oh, I get the spinning ball of death, great. Uh, so while I'm waiting for this to come back, really quickly, um, I have a BOF later uh, tomorrow on large scale projects where I talk more about Jira, so you're welcome to come to that. And I've got two sessions at the Aqua booth uh, today and tomorrow, one on Jira tips and tricks. So that is, if you're interested in that, please come and check that out. That one is at um, 6.30, 18.30 tonight. And I have another one that's on um, Wednesday, um, the large scale projects, that's at 1045 in, gallery, in one of the galleries upstairs. All right, and I can't go to the many more slides because I'm stuck. So I hope this was hopeful, uh, helpful for everybody. Come, if you have any questions, come see me at the, at the Aquia booth downstairs and let's talk Jira. Awesome, thanks guys. <laughs>